board member. Um, I'm here today to introduce your panel that's turning into maybe a speaker and an assistant. Uh, but uh, our, our main speaker today is Dennis Wilkie. Dennis is the president of Rosedale Technical Institute in uh, Pittsburgh and also chairman of the Precision Manufacturing Institute in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Uh, Dennis joined Rosedale Tech back in 2005 after a 14 year career uh, as a retail executive. Uh, so he knows a lot about marketing and sales and he's done you know, some amazing things. So uh, the student enrollment at Rosedale has nearly tripled under Dennis's leadership and the school consistently ranks high in the best places to work surveys for southeastern Pennsylvania, southwestern, I'm sorry. And he's also a current member, as I, uh, on the board of directors of PAPS. <coughs> Debbie Beer is uh, also going to be presenting or helping, so I will not introduce Debbie. I'll let Dennis tell you a little bit about uh, Debbie as needed, and uh, we'll get started. So we'll Thank you. I'm going to use this, so I don't want to help. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so, Rudy said I know a lot about marketing and things like that. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't work that hard really, and this is going to be tough for me. So bear with me. If I'm terrible, please don't tell Debbie Don that I was terrible. I was great. Okay. I don't, I'm afraid of her. I think. Um, but yeah, Debbie Beer is my director of admissions, and she's also in charge of our marketing uh, team. Uh, Angela Nelson is my marketing coordinator, and I have a marketing manager, Susie, who's not here today. Um, if you didn't get a handout, did you make sure everybody got the handouts? Okay. All right. So all of our contact information is on there, and we're always willing to talk and, and share ideas with you. So, but before we start, and you're going to hate me, this is like your mother making you eat your vegetables. Half of the value, at least, of coming to conferences like this, and I know you know this, is networking, right? So please, just take 35 seconds right now. Find somebody in this room you don't know and introduce yourself. Maybe a change a card, and let's do some networking right now. Please, 35 seconds. Go. I don't have any cards or anything. So you're working Oh, really? Brand new. If I would have done this in the compliance in the compliance session, nobody would have said a word. I love working with marketing people. You guys love the network. This is great. I don't even have to talk. Just keep going. No, this is perfect. I love it. Marketing people, it's, it's, like, it's, 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 it's this much my job, but it's like the, one of the favorite parts of my job is to work with my marketing team. And uh, thank you both for participating like that. Um, so I wanna, we're going to talk about newsletters. It's, it seems like a, um, a minor topic, but we're, at the end of the session, I think you'll agree it's not minor. It can be very powerful, um, having an effective newsletter. And I totally believe in it. Uh, sir, don't forget your handouts if you're already coming in right from right here. Here you go. Um, but uh, so first, let me ask you a question. Who here already has a newsletter at their school? Wow. Okay, we got a couple. She's uh, and uh, Amanda is my marketing coordinator at the Meeple School Precision Manufacturing Institute. Wave, Amanda. Okay. Um, so I know she has one. But um, so I'm so glad you're here because this is something you can take back and actually make use of this conference in this session. Hopefully by the end you'll agree. Um, so what we're going to do today is discuss the who, what, where, when, why, and how of effective newsletters. Um, but I'm not going to be giving the answers. I'm not going to stand up here and talk the whole time. I hope you're okay with that. Okay. 
Um, I've got slides up here that are blank because you have the answers. If you think, right, think about it. We're going to spend some time thinking together. You're going to yell out answers. I'm going to throw in some blanks if there's something I thought of. But I'm expecting you guys are going to teach me something here today too. Okay? Um, the reason I don't have answers up here is there's no right way for schools, for all schools, right? The, the right way for you may be different than the right way for me. But there are some best practices we can share, right? So you're going to think of some things that are great for you, and then you're going to think of some things that also might help me, and vice versa. So that's where we're going to be um, at the end. Um, and also, by the way, the handouts that you have on the slides, the blank lines are there for you to fill in your answers, right? Um, actually, write down stuff. Write down whatever works to you. You don't have to write down everything we say, but something's going to hit you, and I want you to take it home and use use this information. So write that stuff down on your on your handouts. At the end, I've got a little recap, and then uh, talk about a couple other uh, larger topics. But um, is everyone okay with that agenda? Can we move on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I don't know what I would have said if you said no. <laughs> I, I don't have to worry about that. So why did we do this letter? Um, why? And this is your chance to talk. Why are we doing this letter? Why, why should you do a newsletter? Someone started. More enrollments. To get more enrollments, right? To generate leads. That's what we're all about, right? What else? Showcase what we have, what we offer. Share information, share news, right? New programs, anything happening in the school. What else? Build morale. Morale, yeah, employee morale, right? Get some stories in there about your people what the school is doing. Makes, makes you proud. Who else wants to be proud? Students. Students. And, and who wants to be proud of the students? Yes. Parents. Who else? What, what else? Why else would we want to do a, a good newsletter? Placement. Job placement. That's right. That's why we do what we do, to get students jobs. Perfect. What else? Let me, let me share one interesting thing with you. So I recently hired a, an instructor, and he told me that for the past year and a half or so, he was periodically going on my new, on my website, looking at our newsletter, thinking, "Damn, I want to work there." And he, he kept trying to get in, and finally we had an opening. So attracting talent, right? Share the news about what's happening at your school, right? Who else wants to know? Who else needs to know what's happening good at your school? Employers. Employers for sure, right? That's how we get a lot of our leads. Elected officials. Elected officials. There's Rudy, my lobbyist back there. Yes. <laughs> what, what better way to share the good news about what happens in our schools than to send an effective newsletter to your uh, local legislators and national legislators? What else? Does anybody do any, anything on the web? Do you do web marketing at all? Do you like keywords? How many keywords are in your newsletter? Hundreds, right? So get that newsletter up on, on your website. That's great for SEO. Um, what else? Let's see, anybody have a school that's been around for a little while? Yeah, I know Triangle Tech's been around long, longer than Rosedale, right? Document, document what's the history of your school. So actually I brought some, for the past, I don't know, six years, I brought some samples of newsletters. So let me share this with you real quick. Um, you will see the evolution too. Of, this is August 2006. Right, awesome. Doesn't it look great. <laughs> this is December 2008. Oh, we went to black and white, but there's there's pictures in it at least, right? My favorite of all, though, is I went. I was reading this. I don't know if you can read this headline. It says, "Rosedale Technical Institute is now on MySpace." <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That was hot then, right? But uh, yeah, there's elected official visiting the school. They love that stuff, you know. Um, and then we started moving into color, right? There's some different ones for color. Then we realized, well, we want to start printing more of these, and it's pretty expensive to do those. So we started moving into newsprint, a third of the cost, and that's the one you have today. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, anybody talk to the high school guidance counselors? All right, they, they want this stuff, right? What better way for them to know about your school? Anything else? Okay, how many people enroll high school students while they're still in high school? And what do you what do you do to try to get them to make sure they start? You gotta contact them year round, right? All the way through the whole year. You gotta carry them for nine months, ten months. This is a great opportunity to keep them engaged with the school, right? So it's the drive to start rate. Right? Um, what else? 
Oh, how about who goes to college fairs? Anybody? Yeah, you go to college fairs, right? This is a great tool to get someone to walk over to your table, right? It's a little different than, you don't know, see it, everybody doesn't have this, right? I shouldn't be telling this, Ben, you're going to come. Uh, huh? No, that's right. We're all about helping each other in this business, right? Um, it's a great tool, and at the very least, they're going to walk away with something. You can hand it out to them, right? They're going to walk away with something more than a little glossy brochure that everybody does. This is real stuff, and they can connect, and there's going to be a picture of a student that looks just like them, and they, or someone they even know, right, or a company they know in that newsletter. So it's great at college fairs. Um, oh, is anybody here having a, a school that's accredited? Yeah, the answer is yes, right? Um, what do accreditors like to see? Documentation, right? Here, you can show, you can document. This is the school stuff that we do. Accreditors, anybody doing an audit of your school, they'd love this. Um, let's see. I don't know, I think I'm running out. Anybody else have anything? Debbie? Um, one thing that we mentioned up there were um, employers, but our employees, by seeing themselves, it kind of, you know, builds morale, as we mentioned, but it also is recognition, which is really important to maintain that base of employees for the school. We've been working really hard on remembering to recognize people, right? As, as leaders and managers, um, it's so important to recognize people for the good work they do. And then if you get this and they send it, you send it home to them, or they take it home and their family can see their picture in the paper, that's pretty cool, right? All right, um, any other thoughts on why we do a newsletter? Why you should do a newsletter? All right, crickets. We're moving on. What content do you include? All right, what content? What do you think, what, what kinds of stories? I mean. You have a newsletter right in front of you, so this is kind of easy. What kind of content should we include? Oh, you started off so lively. Yeah, you know about placement. Job placement, perfect. What else? Student spotlights. Yes, I love the student spotlights. It's so cool to light up what your students are into and the kind of cool stuff your students do. What else? Perfect attendance. Yes, awards, attendance, and grades, and things like that. Absolutely. What else? Campus events. Campus events, yeah, things that you're doing. Brag about the stuff going on in your school. Get the pictures out there. What else? Industry related news. Yes, trends going on in the industry. Um, you know, that's a great thing for attracting students. If you talk about the growth of the industry that you're training for, boy, that, that trends, like people can do math, they can do that calculation in their head, wait. There's new stuff happening, there's new jobs coming. If I train in this field, I get a job. I'm gonna to come to the school, right? New industry information. What else? I like this uh, referral section you have here. Yeah. That's, that's uh, a good idea. You have to ask for referrals, right? You gotta ask. That's a great place to, to ask. See, they're all critiquing now, they're taking in there. What else? I should be giving out prizes for answers. I think overall, just the, the stories that you tell show the depth of the institution. You know, that it's not just uh, come and show up and take class and get hard. There's a lot going on. And it, you know, it just illustrates the culture of, of your school very nice. Exactly. We, we all know that none of our schools are just about the numbers and bringing in tuition dollars. We're not. But sometimes people think we are. Here's an example, and here's documentation that we're not that way, right? Laurel Tech cares about their students, right? Roosevelt Tech cares about their students. Here's, here, we'll prove it to you. We know that. We know that they do charity work. We know that they build cars in their backyard in their spare time, right? We know about our students. That means we care. That's the culture of the school. Um, career fairs, graduations, right? That's a great one. Pictures of graduations. Uh, anytime you get a high school trip coming in. You know, then you get, when you send that, that newspaper out to the high schools and they're in it, you think they're going to show that, huh? Right? That's perfect. Get the high schools to come, take their pictures, send them out the newsletter, you know, a little bit later. What else? Well, Rudy mentioned political visits. You got to do that. You know? Have you ever met a politician that doesn't want to see their picture in the paper? Um, special demographics, veterans. You gotta highlight the veterans, right? You know, Roosevelt's a military-friendly school. Um, 
we gotta we gotta show that we respect and, and attract and have good results with our veterans. Have a little veteran section. Um, something we haven't talked about yet is um, when we're reaching out to the community, and again, the part of this session is community involvement, is one of the ideas is potentially to get your vendors involved. Vendors could do ads in your newspaper, right? They can um, supply content, uh, include your vendors. Um, you can even get, uh, and we haven't really done this yet, but get the community involved as far as announcing events, um, as long as it's kind of fits somewhere with what you're talking about. Got to be a little careful there. You don't want to dilute the message, but um, you know, get other get other people to submit information for you. Um, ooh, one of the newsletter articles in there is a student won a contest for a writing a writing an essay in his uh, business class, and uh, so we we published his letter or his uh, essay in here, right? So students submitted stuff. Um, and that's just one example. You could have students submit. Uh, like we're having we have a two week summer break right now. And so our students are sending in pictures of what they're doing over the break. So we're going to have a section in the next newsletter. Hey, here's what some of the people did during their summer break. Um, so get other people to submit stuff. Otherwise, Angela's got Angela and uh, Amanda have to write all the articles, right? If they don't get people submitting stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, we mentioned about it, employees, um, employee anniversaries, uh, employee awards, employee um, certifications. That's all good stuff. Um, anytime you have a new student. Play a section of here for our new students. New employees. That's a great place to have. You'll see some in there. Highlight new employees. Anything else? Are you getting anything out of this yet? Yes. Oh, Debbie's got more fun. Stay in touch oh. with your graduates. Mm. Alumni relations. Yeah, it, it's, it's huge. I mean, um, they find out what new programs. They contact us to find out. You know, they've already completed one degree program, it's an opportunity for them to return and take some additional classes. So we see the benefit in that as well. And who better to give referrals than your graduates, right? So send these to your graduates. Okay, so that's the content. How do we make it attractive looking? How do we make it look good? Um, you guys are marketing people. How do you make things look good? Pictures. Pictures, 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 pictures. Okay. What else? Color. color. That's right. Vary, vary the color. Highlight certain words in certain colors. What else? Those are the first two I had to do. Fonts. Change your fonts. What's that? It has, to, it has to come together and look professional, right? But it doesn't always have to be perfectly square or parallel, right? Sometimes you want to throw things on angles, right? Uh, here's an example. We have pictures on different angles, but it's very professional and neat looking, right? And we got fonts, and we got different um, colors. Look at that. Boy, Debbie, you did something right. That's awesome. She always does things right. What else? Uh, vary the sizes of your sections in your articles. Like, you know, you can have a big block, or you can have a little square, um, different sizes. You can have a circle for something that fits. Um, watch what's on the cover. Right, whatever's showing needs to be attention grabbing. Pay attention to the headlines. Um, get, get content out there in the front that makes you want to dig into it. So pay attention to the, uh, the, the cover pages, front and back. Um, sections for similar types of stories. Like there was a section on like student events or student information stories, student special interest stories. There's a section on employers. Put sections together, it kind of makes people like when you're reading the newspaper, you got the local news section, you got the business section. Well, we got the veteran section, we got the student section, we got the employee section. Um, background colors, right? So some, in some of the pages in there, you'll see different colors of background. Um, it helps you set things apart without having ugly lines everywhere. Um, so one of the things to consider when you want to make it look good is sometimes we don't know everything there is to know about that, right? Think about possibly using some outside help. There's a lot of companies out there, if you want to pay for it, they'll do a great job for you and create a layout. Um, you know, not every school um, has a lot of people around for support in this kind of thing, like for marketing support, things like that. Um, so consider using the outside help. Um, it, it can really help you make it look good. Instructors are great resources. We get most of our stories from instructors because they want their classes showcased. And so they feed 
jobs and offer a lot of information. Well, so some of us have instructors that have talents that apply. Um, I mean, I've used instructors to put together um, slide, uh, movies and slideshows and uh, write articles. You know, I'm sure if you if you do any kind of writing classes in your school, you got someone. You can make it a class project to write articles. Use the help that's out there. Okay. So we got a we got a newsletter with great content. It looks good. Who do we send it to? We're gonna send someone. Who do we send it to? What's that? Graduates. Graduates. Employers. Employers. Prospects. All right. Leads. Prospects. Schools. All the schools. It might work with agencies. Career Link, OBR, VA, these TRA people, they send you students if they like your school. They don't send you students if they don't like your school. Make them like your school. Show them all the cool stuff you do. Right? You want Career Link people to think of your school when they're talking to their clients. OBR has been a great source of students for us. Um, they love our school and we brag about our school because who else is going to brag about our school, right? Send it to the students' homes. Send to, uh, we talked about graduates, send it to your current students. Post on your website? Yeah. With your current, and, and uh, well, your alumni more so, do you have a, a huge cost in those return postage things? And you, have, you don't have the most current addresses and so on. Is that, is that something that's... Debbie, when you're mailing this, do you do or current resident, or to, so it doesn't come back? Or? No, it actually does um, go to the resident and that person's name. And because it's such a low cost and black rate right now, we really have, and they are returning them. I bet we get fifteen to twenty-five, maybe back. With Out of a thousand that yeah. we're yeah. It's not a high turnover. But if you, if I told the placement area that because they can't contact them, <laughs> yeah. you know, they don't live there anymore, but they they're accepting their mail there. That's so, another reason to, to have a newsletter, though. If you're sending good stuff about your school, they're more likely to answer the phone when you're calling them about their you know, job situation. All right. So here's another thing you can do with your newsletter: put it in your lobby. Does anybody here have like trade magazines and other stuff in their lobby? Take it and throw it away. Don't have anything in your lobby that isn't something you've produced. What if they open up the magazine and there's an article about, you don't need to go to school to get a job. What if there's an article, what if there's an ad from your competitor in there, right? What if there's something that makes them think of something else? If, you're, if they're in your lobby, you control what they see and what they read. It doesn't sound right when you say it that way, but you do, right? Make them read about you. Um, don't have, don't be like a doctor's office and you have Sports Illustrated and whatever, even if it's industry stuff. Again, there could be something that points them in a different direction. Make them read, they're sitting there, they're going to read whatever's there, right? If they're waiting for their child to finish the, the Wonderlick test or they're waiting to meet with someone in financial aid, they're going to read whatever's there. Make them read your cool, good looking, good content newsletter. They love it. And I love it. I love it when I see them read it. Okay. Um, so, we talked a little bit about the mailing, and, and actually that flows into how you produce it. So, how are you going to create a newsletter? What do, what do you think? What, what can you do? Um, how do you think we produce this one? Yeah, want to call it on a black and white copy here, right? You can do that. What else can you do? Anybody ever send anything out to printers? They'll do a good job for you, right? You pay a little more, but you start getting you know, a pretty good looking piece, right? You can send it out to get printed. What else? Yes, that's, that's, that's something we're going to delve into in a little deeper um, in just a minute. Electronic versions of these can be very powerful. There's pluses and minuses to the print, and there's pluses and minuses to the electronic versions. Um, what else? 
newspaper companies, you know, they're printing stuff anyway. The presses are there. If they're not running for them, they could be running for you. The other things to consider when you're producing a newsletter is the software that you want to use. Um, what are some of the software packages we use to create our newsletter? InDesign, Photoshop um, is part of the Adobe suite, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We also use Publisher. Publisher. Even use Word. You can use Word. So here's the thing: start with Word, a Word document on your color copier. Start somewhere, right? You saw where we started, you know. You saw where we started. You start somewhere. You can always make it better. You got to start. Start with Word and, and a color copier. Um, let's see. So we're going to do that, that. The pros and cons of the web at the end, or on the the uh, electronic version at the end. Is there a slide at the end? Okay, dude. We'll come back to that. Okay. So this is important. Now you figured out the content. You figured out to make it look good, right? You figured out how you're going to do it, at least for now. How often do you want to produce this? What do you think? Monthly, maybe. Quarterly. Quarterly, maybe, right? After every new start date, you want to announce your new students, maybe. Um, after important big events, graduations, um, we had our summer picnic in the most recent one. It had just happened three days before we published. I don't know how you guys got the pictures in there so quick. After big school events. Um, so, do you want to do this on a Consistent basis or an inconsistent basis? Consistent, right. Pick a calendar and stick to it, right? Um, we're doing the Pittsburgh newsletters every two months, so six a year. And then we're doing the um, Meadville newsletter, I think four or five, four times a year, quarterly, right? So we got five monthly and we got quarterly. It depends on the school, right? It's gonna, this is a situation where what's right for you may be right, not right for someone else. You, maybe you want to do a smaller version monthly. You know, maybe you have starts every three, four weeks. You want to do one every month. Okay, that's fine. Just maybe you won't be as big. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe you want to save it up and do big ones and make them go all out, all out, and make it look fantastic. Okay. The point is, you got to start and be consistent with it. Um, let's see. How do you get buy-in from your school community, including like vendors, employers? students and elected officials, things like that. What can you do to get buy-in from them? To make them actually want to read this and want to look at it. Put them in it. Yeah, showcase them. Right. Get your key vendors. Get your, your politicians in here. What else? You, you brag about the companies your students work for, right? Brag about it in your newsletter. Put the company names real big. Get their logo. There's a chance to vary the color and the font size, right? You get the employer's logo in your in your web in your uh, newsletter. Um, we talked earlier about content. One of the things we mentioned was jobs, right? If you focus your newsletter on jobs, or at least part of it, then it there's value there because people know that's what's important right now. People need to get jobs, and that's what we do. So have your content be relative to what's happening in the world. We want to get these out to the schools. We need our schools to have them and be reading them and, and showing them to students, right? Put the schools in them, like I mentioned before with the, um, the high school field trips. But also, you know, there's other things we do with our schools. We support them. We go out and help them judge contests. We, I don't know, what all do we, we, we go to their events, their fundraisers. Uh, we do lots of things with our schools, right? Put that in there. That way they're going to read it because they're in there once in a while. In turn, when we do that for the high schools, when they have a newsletter, they just copy what we had in ours to showcase their students. So it's going out to a whole new branch of parents out there. So you can see the correlation between using so much in the high school area that it, it does expand. And they, they provide this information to community resources. The community local newspapers pick up more information on high school than they will about a textbook. And so they, in, in fact, that's how we're getting some of the publicity in newspapers is because of the high school events that we've had posted. Yeah. 
That's a great point. Uh, there's a lot of little community magazines and community newspapers, and, and they're going to love to brag about their secondary schools, right? Their high schools. If they're if we're associated with that, that's free for us. Um, so respond to suggestions. When people are like students are submitting ideas, respond to them right away. Get them in there, right? Um, if uh, employers want to are talking to you about something that they're proud of going on, maybe they have a really great uh, new hire training program, and they step step them through this comprehensive program over 90 days, and they love it. So talk about it. You know, hey, our employers are great employers. Here's an example. We talked about ads. You know, if they got an ad, they're going to go read it, looking for their ad, right? Um, the other thing is to be inclusive. We've all got different programs, sometimes different shifts, day students, night students, uh, even weekend students sometimes. You got to make sure you pay attention and include all of the shifts or all of the departments. Um, sometimes, you know how it goes. Whoever the greasy, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Whoever's coming to you and talking to you about stuff, or whoever is welcoming when you go out and, like when Amanda and Angela are going out looking for stories, you know, some people are ready, willing, and able to talk, and some people are, well, I don't like to talk so much. But if you don't pay attention and dig hard and include those people, then you lose the audience a little bit, right? You lose those people. Hey, they don't, they don't put stories in about the night programs. They don't put stories in about this program, that program. You gotta be inclusive, right? That helps get the buy-in too. I have a question. Yeah. Do you guys require, for, for all these photos of the students or employers, do, do you guys require that there's a photo release that you have? Good yeah. question. High schools. Per, um, so we do something. Yeah, when they come in for a field trip, we have them sign a release for photos. If they choose not to, then they're not in the photos. Had every, every student, I, I don't think we've ever had one that that they didn't want it, you know, so they're proud of it. And all of our incoming students to an orientation. Right. Does anybody else say anything different? Uh, okay. Just for like photo release? I have a question, what if they're not 18? Like the high school's coming in? We contacted the high school to get their release. That they were going to give to their students who are there. Like they get their release and they give it to the high school. Yeah, so we have to write it all ahead of time when they come in. Right. And occasionally we'll have a school that doesn't want to, right? right? We've had one. Right, we've had one. Yeah, we've had one. That's okay. They're lost. Did anybody else do anything different on like uh, getting approval to publish pictures and names and things? It's a good question. Um, you know, with everything else on compliance, that's one that you may not think about, but uh, yeah, that could be ugly if you, if you start doing something without permission. So. What else? Okay. Um, I think I have, I think I have, that's all I had. Um, let's see. So, what's the number one reason you aren't doing the newsletter today? Don't do this. <laughs> it costs money. All right, let me ask you a question. So, actually, I, I won a little money in the casino while I've been down here, right? How did I win money? I, I placed a bet. Yeah. How, do, how do you win big money? How do you win big? Place a bigger bet. Place a bigger bet. Um, I know it makes you nervous, and, and if you're a school owner, a school director in here, you know, you're watching every penny. Uh, but if you want to win big, you got to bet big. Um, but the other thing is, when I start on the craft table, I don't bet $100 to start with. I bet five or ten, right? Then things start rolling, then I start adding more. So, you know, that's like, here, this is betting five or ten, right? Then I start betting a little more. Start somewhere. So, how do you get the cost in your budget? What can you do to get the cost in the budget? You are marketing people. You're selling. Debbie always like works me to get extra people and extra funds. I know you do that. How do you get money for your department? Ask. Ask for it. You gotta ask, right? Yeah, good. And what what are they gonna want to know when you ask for money? Return. What's the return? Right. So what is what are the kinds of things you can associate with return? Yeah, new students, right? How much is one new student worth? You know, if it's twenty thousand dollars of tuition, well, for one new student, that'll pay for all of your newsletters for the whole year. One student, I think. 
doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It'll pay for two years. Two years oh. right now. That's because we went to the newspaper, right? Yes, right? It'll pay for two years. One student pays for two years of newsletters. How else, what else about the, about the budget? How else can you convince someone to spend a little bit of money? So, how many people it'll reach? Yes, right. It, circulation, that's a good one. Right. So you can you can do a little back of the envelope sketch, you know, okay, we are going to send all of our graduates for the past four years or whatever. That's 350 <coughs> people, whatever it is. And we're going to send all of our key employers, that's another couple hundred. And so you can figure out, you can do an estimate there. This is going to be 1,500 people, right? It's going to be that reach, something like that. That's a good one. Um, so some people are motivated by pleasure, right? That's your boss who's motivated by pleasure is going to say, well, how much new income am I going to get? How many new students am I going to get? What am I going to get out of this? Some people are motivated by pain, right? There's another example. So if someone's motivated by pain, say, hey, this other school is doing this awesome thing. We need to do this, right? They're going to invest. Okay, I don't want to feel the pain of not being the only one, you know, being the only one not doing this. So there's one. Show them someone else's newsletter. Show them our, show them our newsletter. Or her. Um, let's see. How about this? You guys are marketing people. You're good at making deals, right? Well, how, give me a deal. So I'm, I, I'm going to control your budget. What are you going to make a deal with me? You've seen the infomercials. How do we get you to start something? Try. 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 Do a trial run. Let's try it for you. See if it works. Right? Try that. Let's try for one year. It'll cost you $2,500. We'll, we'll do it on our like, Not even that. If, if you're doing it on your color copier, you know, you're talking about a couple hundred bucks and a little bit of postage. Right? Let's try it for a year. See if it works. What else? What if you have a boss who is like an egomaniac like me? Put one on the copper. <laughs> it works for me, doesn't it? I just figured it out recently. You're not on the cover anymore. I'm not, I haven't been on the cover for a while, yeah. That's because I'm on the book. It's already in the budget. <laughs> that, that, I mean, we talked about this already, but start small. Get in the budget with small. Like, okay, we're going to do the uh, color copier, we're going to do black and white to start with, whatever. Oh, actually, we're going to get into the uh, electronic version too, that's an easy way to get in, in the budget. Um, I don't know, oh, here, uh, here's another, uh, we talked about this briefly at the beginning, why we do a newsletter. One of the reasons is to help drive your organic searches on the web, right? So part of the payback is not just, well, how you're going to drive new students, part of that is getting more keywords out there so it drives more organic searches on your, on your school. Okay. Get that web, get that um, that newsletter on your website, not just a PDF, right? You have to get the keywords embedded. But if you get those keywords in there, it helps drive your drive your organic search, and that that's payback, that's return on investment. Okay, here's something else they can do that you can do if you need help getting this in your budget. Have whoever's in control do money at your school call me, right? I'll convince them. I believe in this. I know it works. Oh, um, do we have the slide on the um, the electronic version versus the print version? Okay, so what are we talking about? Does anybody already send out emails with information? You do some emails? Do you use constant contact or anything? Anybody use a service or you do your own? You do your own? Okay. We have a service now, right? Right. There's a company out there called Constant. I'm sorry. Um, there's a company out there called Constant Contact. I suggest you get in touch with them. Does anybody else use that for anything? You do? You're you used to? Um, Five dollars a month is what we pay, and we uh, send out information once a week to all of our employees, and it's an update of. Events now. This doesn't go out to our students. It's keeping our employees informed. It's a small way to start, but for five dollars a month, it's a great communication tool. And your success are not happy with it. Which way? 
just keeping up with it? I just don't think we utilize this. You didn't use yeah, it. No. Yeah, you have to use it. And um, it's just another avenue out there. It, it, it sparked some interest when we were recently, you'll see on the front page here, we went up to this um, TC house. And if you get an opportunity, read that article. It's on community service. So every week, we showed the progression of an electrical student and what they did to our instructors. And it formed this, oh, wow, I want to see this whole house when it's done. So it, it just creates that um, feeling of, I know it's going on. I don't have to wait to the end to see what the final product is. So we keep everyone informed that way. I would suggest you get in touch with the company. It's a really easy service to use, right? I mean, Angela does it. it and Susie, they, every Thursday, everybody gets an email blast with that information. There's also other companies similar to Constant Contact, the MailChimp. MailChimp's another uh, company similar to Constant Contact that relatively the same, just a couple of different features, but we to get the newsletter out there. Okay, so Doug earlier mentioned about doing an electronic newsletter. So what are the pros of doing print? first of all. So doing the actual printed paper, the pros. Um, accessible, right? You don't really need a whole lot of technology. Um, you need, really, Microsoft Word and a copier is enough to get something done, right? Um, the design, the high quality design on, on the print, you can make it, you can do different things with color and pictures and make it look good. Um, the shelf life is something on print, right? It's gonna be laying around the school. It's gonna be laying around the agency. It's gonna be laying around the high school. Um, so there's some shelf life. So if you're doing it every couple months, yeah, you might get a lot of people reading it right away, but they might be reading it all the way through because it's still around, it's on a piece of paper. Um, let's see. In the print, you can be creative with your layout. Of course, I guess that's gonna be over on the pros for the electronic too, but um, let's see. Various layout options and different sizes. You saw the, the size of our newsletters, newsletters changed over the years. Um, so here's something that's, it's, it's, if you think about it, it makes sense. Sometimes people really just like to hold a newspaper, right? It, there's a feel to it, there's a texture to it. Um, sometimes things that are only electronic don't have that feel. Um, now, that's different for everybody. Um, I'm not an ebook reader at all, and the uh, one of my other people was here uh, at the conference today. We'll only read ebooks, right? So um, yeah, we have that battle all the time. But some people really like to have that paper in their hands. Um, let's see. Oh, it's already printed out. So I, mean, I kind of argue on this. When vendors, any vendor that comes to me and says, we're going green and we're going to only email you invoices, I, I just laugh at them. I'm like, don't lie to me. It, you're not going green. You're, you're saving you money. But it's not green because you know what's going to happen. I'm printing the invoice on my copier or my printer, and actually waste more energy and ink and money than if they would just mass produce them, right? So it's it's not being green unless unless you're a company that's gone to like paperless invoice processing. We haven't done that yet. We're small, I guess. I guess I don't know. I don't. Is anybody here do paperless invoice processing? Right. So if you get an e-boy invoice, you're printing it, right? Am I the only one? You're printing it, right? So it's not green, it's actually less green than just sending the old way. Um, but it's already printed out, so they don't have to actually print out and read it, or if they read it online, they get distracted um, on an electronic version. Uh, you don't have to scroll up and down, you can see like multiple stories on one page. Um, it's a traditional method, people are used to it. So employers and parents, school administrators, high school administrators, you know, they might be more traditional, and, and they like the feel of paper and the look of paper. Um, the pros for the digital, fast delivery, right? You can get it out. You, I mean, you guys use Facebook for your school?